Welcome, this is Mrs. Kinlan, and in this video we'll learn about cell growth and reproduction. Our goal is to be able to describe the three stages of the cell cycle, interphase, division of the nucleus, and cytokinesis, division of the cytoplasm. So there's two purposes to cell division. The first is growth and development from a fertilized egg, and the second is repair or wound healing as seen in the image. When your father's sperm fertilizes your mother's egg, at that moment in time, you are a single cell. But because of mitosis, division of your body cells, you become multicellular and your cells specialize to perform different functions. Um, all of the DNA in a cell makes up the cell's genome. You get half your DNA from your mom and you get half your DNA from your dad and all together that composes your genome. A genome in prokaryotic cells like bacteria might be a single DNA molecule, but eukaryotic cells may have many DNA molecules. DNA molecules get packaged into chromosomes and we have 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes are actually composed of more than just DNA. They're actually 60% protein and only 40% DNA. Um, the DNA that makes up chromosomes is called chromatin. And this chromatin is made up of supercoiled DNA and it's coiled around these proteins called histones. And together, these bead-like structures of supercoiled DNA and histones are called nucleosomes. And I included a video how DNA is packaged for, um, for you to view. So chromosome structure, um, in preparation for cell division, DNA is replicated and the chromosomes condense. That means they thicken. Um, each duplicated chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids and they separate during cell division. These sister chromatids are attached in the middle at a place called the centromere. And it's kind of like the narrow waist where the two sister chromatids come together. So in this upper picture, you can see a blue chromosome, a pink chromosome, and after the DNA is replicated, we have the two sister chromatids attached at the centromere for each chromosome. So there's a lot of vocabulary that goes along with cell division and genetics. First, we talked about our chromatin. Chromatin is unwound DNA, and it's typically found throughout the, in the nucleus um, throughout interphase, which is prior to cell division. Chromosomes are tightly packaged DNA, and they're only found during active cell division, which is going to be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So this image shows you interphase on the left here, where we have our chromatin thin and thread-like. And then as the chromatin condenses and thickens into chromosomes, they become visible under the microscope. This is prophase, the first stage of um, cell division. And this is showing you the replicated chromosome composing sister chromatids attached at the centromere. So uh, the difference between body cells and sex cells, um, body cells are diploid. That means they have two sets of chromosomes in every cell. And sex cells are haploid. They have half the number of chromosomes. Every eukaryotic organism has a specific number of chromosome unique to that species. And this chart over here on the right shows you the number of chromosomes found in different diploid organisms, the diploid number of chromosomes. Somatic cells are all the cells of your body except eggs if you're a girl and sperm if you're a boy. All of your somatic or body cells have two sets of chromosomes, one from mom and one from dad. So two sets of chromosomes, we call that diploid and we represent it by 2N. And as you can see, humans have 46 chromosomes in our somatic cells. Now in our reproductive cells called gametes, eggs and sperm, we have half the number of chromosomes. We call that haploid and we represent it by just the letter N. And humans have 23 chromosomes in the eggs and 23 in the sperm. So 
the haploid number is half the number of chromosomes and the diploid number is double the number of chromosomes. So when a haploid sperm fertilizes a haploid egg, that very first cell is called a zygote, the cell after fertilization, and it is diploid. So it gets the, the chromosomes from the sperm and it gets the chromosomes from the egg and it becomes diploid. Mitosis is a type of reproduction that occurs in somatic cells. So these somatic cells reproduce by mitosis. Gametes undergo a special type of cell division called meiosis, and we'll learn about that in another slide presentation. So the three stages of the cell cycle are interphase, emphase, and cytokinesis. Interphase is where the cell is the majority of the time. The cell is growing, um, duplicating its chromosomes, and it prepares for cell division. M phase is division of the nucleus. If it's a body cell, M stands for mitosis. But if it's sex cells, eggs or sperm, M stands for meiosis. Whichever it is, the last stage is called cytokinesis, and this is division of the cytoplasm. So the two types of uh, M phase, mitosis and meiosis, mitosis results in daughter cells with genetically identical information. Their DNA is going to be identical. And the purposes of mitosis are growth from a fertilized egg and cell specialization and repair or wound healing. Meiosis is for just eggs and sperm, sperm if you're male and eggs if you're female. And at the end of meiosis, the eggs and sperm will be genetically different from each other. The purpose of meiosis is to produce sex cells with half the number of chromosomes, haploid sex cells. So as we said, interphase is where the cell is most of the time. 90% of the time, the cell is in interphase. And interphase is divided into three subphases. The first is called G1. And G stands for gap phase. This is where the cell is growing and it's where organelles get replicated like mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum and lysosomes. The next phase is called S phase and S stands for synthesis to make or build. And what's being made is an extra copy of the DNA. The DNA gets replicated. And then G2 is the second gap phase. Again, the cell is growing, but this is where that replicated DNA gets double checked for errors. And if there's any errors, it gets repaired. The cell grows during all three phases, but the chromosomes are duplicated during the S phase. So this shows you G1, um, the chromosomes, the cell is growing, everything, um, is being duplicated, the organelles, but it's the S phase where the chromosomes are being duplicated. So we see here prior to S phase, and this right here showing you the sister chromatids attached at the centromere would be after S phase. So in G2, our duplicated chromosomes get checked for errors, but in all of them, the cell is growing. So G1, S, and G2 come before mitosis. G1, S, and G2 are all a part of interphase, where the cell is 90% of the time. So in mitosis, now we're going to enter division of the nucleus, and we're talking about body cells, somatic cells, so this is mitosis. P stands for prophase, M stands for metaphase, A stands for anaphase, and T stands for telophase, and we abbreviate that PMAT. So the first stage, prophase, what's happening is our duplicated chromosomes start to shorten, thicken, and condense. They actually become visible under the microscope. The nuclear membrane and the nucleolus break down. The spindle fibers start to form, and the centrioles begin to move to opposite sides of the cell. So in our animated prophase, these orange rectangles uh, represent the uh, centrioles, and these black lines coming out of the centrioles represent the spindle fibers. This dashed blue line represents our nuclear membrane breaking down, and we can see how our chromosomes are actually becoming um, visible under the microscope. So the next phase is metaphase, and I think this one is some of the e one of the easiest to see under the microscope because I think of metaphase and I think of middle. 
what happens is the chromosomes are pulled to the center of the cell, which is, can be called the metaphase plate. It can also be called the equatorial plate. Um, but the spindle fibers attach at the centromeres, and as they shorten, as the spindle fibers shorten, they're going to pull the chromosomes um, to the center of the cell. And we can see that the chromosomes are lined up in the middle in our onion root tip. And then this is a white fish, and we see these dark black chromosomes lined up in the center. The next phase is anaphase, and this is where our spindle fibers are actually really shortening. And what's happening is the spindle fibers pull the centromeres apart, and the sister chromatids end up being pulled to opposite ends of the cell by the spindle fibers. So here in our onion root tip, we see the um, spindle fibers, those chromat sister chromatids are pulled to opposite sides of the cell, and we can also see that in the whitefish. The next stage is telophase, and in telophase, we have our sister chromatids, which are now called chromosomes, are on opposite sides of the cell, and the nuclear membrane will begin to reform around them. And those chromosomes um, start to become thin thread-like chromatin again. Now, each of the two daughter cells will have be genetically identical, and they'll have those daughter nuclei um, will be identical to each other on the two sides of the cell. So by the time telophase is happening, the last step, cytokinesis, is also kind of occurring simultaneously. In plant cells, this line, it's called a cell plate, and it forms between the two daughter cells, and that cell plate will become the new cell wall. In animal cells, they don't have a cell wall, they have a cell membrane, and the cell membrane starts to pinch inward, and that forms what's called a cleavage furrow. So this shows you each of the phases. We see an interphase, our thin thread-like chromatin. On prophase, our chromosomes are condensing and becoming visible. And as we progress towards metaphase, we see our spindle fibers are forming from the centrioles and our chromosomes are very visible. In metaphase, the spindle fibers have pulled the chromosomes to the middle of the metaphase plate. In anaphase, the sister chromatids are being pulled apart by the centromere. And by telophase, um, the nuclear membrane will reform around the genetically identical daughter cells. And um, if it's an animal cell, the cleavage furrow will begin to form for cytokinesis. So this shows you the onion root tip. Many times um, when we want to look at mitosis under the microscope, we find something that is growing rapidly. And the tip of roots, um, that is called the site of uh, elongation. And so we see a lot of mitosis going on in those locations. So that's why we, they make a good specimen for observing mitosis. So we can see an anaphase, we can see a metaphase, but if you look, all of these phases here are all in interphase. This might be a telophase right here. We see that cell plate forming between these two daughter, um, daughter cells. So we talked about cytokinesis in animal cells versus plant cells. Animal cells, the cell membrane pinches inward, forming that cleavage furrow. And in plant cells, the cell plate forms between the cells, and that becomes the new cell wall. So this shows you that cleavage furrow on the left, and we see our cell plate forming, which will be the new cell wall in the image on the right-hand side. So this illustration um, shows you each of the phases and tells you what's happening in each phase. It gives you an animation, and it also gives you a microscopic view. And this shows you some onion root tip right here. We have our anaphase, we have anaphase, we have um, interphase, a lot of interphases. So practice looking and identifying the different cells in the onion root tip. These are a couple videos for you to take a look at. And the next thing is showing you uh, regulation of the cell cycle, some different checkpoints. 
each of the cells, um, they replicate at different rates depending on the type of cell. Some cells, like in our mouth, our cheek cells, epithelial cells, um, the frequency of replication, high turnover, but other cells, maybe neurons in the, in the brain, maybe don't um, replicate as quickly. And external signals can stop mitosis. Generally, um, cells, when they touch each other, they will stop dividing once they, um, once they touch. Um, and then cells also stop dividing um, if they are not anchored to a substrate. The only exception is cancer cells seem to not follow density dependent inhibition or anchorage dependent. Cancer cells um, will continue to divide and divide and divide and they can form a tumor or a mass. So this shows you anchorage dependence. So if a cell isn't attached to a substrate or a bottom, it won't divide generally. If we scoop out some of the cells, then it will just fill in until they just touch. That's called density dependent inhibition. And that takes place in normal mammal cells like ours. But cancer cells, they don't follow those rules and they'll continue and continue dividing, forming a mass or a tumor. So um, the way your body gets around that is there's something called apoptosis, and this is programmed cell death. So generally what happens when um, your body recognizes a, a damaged cell or the DNA is damaged or, um, or maybe enzymes are damaged, to prevent those damaged cells from continuing to reproduce and pass on those errors, um, what happens is this, this cell will actually destroy itself and that's called apoptosis. And um, that prevents um, cancer, that prevents damaged cells from reproducing. But another thing apoptosis does is it, it provides and produces definition of your facial structures, your fingers, your toes, all those little digits. The reason you don't have webbing between your toes is because of apoptosis. This illustration shows you a little air in apoptosis. Um, and then this shows you how a human embryo at 41 days, it looks like little paddles in its feet and its fingers. But by 56 days, apoptosis has taken place, and now there's no more webbing in between the little digits. So the way apoptosis happens is um, it's initiated, there's a, a response to cell damage, and so signals get sent, and that causes the cells to shrink and condense, and then the cell membrane also starts coming inward. And um, gradually the cell becomes fragmented and it breaks off into these little pieces or vacuoles of, of parts of the cell. And then macrophages are finally going to engulf all of those cell fragments and digest them. Remember, macrophages will ingest them by phagocytosis, which is a form of active transport that requires ATP. And that's how your body cleans up those um, fragmented cell parts. So this is a self check. You can go down the list and see if you can do each of these things. And um, if you are unable to, you can go back and review the video. Well, I hope that was helpful and thank you for listening.